how much ammo will I need? Hey everybody, I'm Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. It's a good question, and it's a hot topic right now. The future seems very uncertain. Recent events are things that don't happen very often around here. I know there's a lot of stuff going on around that, a lot of stories, a lot of talk, a lot of theories. I'm not gonna go into that. It's, it's something that, you know, it happened. How much ammo should you stockpile for your weapon system? Direct answer is it depends. It depends on a lot of factors. It depends on what you think you're gonna be doing. It depends on the situation. It depends on your ability, your age, your function, and what role you're gonna fill within an SHTF scenario or a civil war, whatever it may be. Maybe you are somebody that's gonna be support staff. Maybe you're somebody that's gonna be taking care of the garden, taking care of the kids, taking care of the house, taking care of the property, stuff like that. Maybe you'll be the guy out on a fixed fighting position, an LPOP. Maybe you'll be the guy out patrolling and running active missions, offensive or defensive, out there in the things. How much ammo you need depends on what role you're in. And it depends on what kind of weapon system you have. Do you have a semi-automatic? Do you have a bolt gun? Do you have a shotgun? And the roles that those weapon systems are gonna be fulfilling. Is it a Ruger 1022 for hunting small game to keep your mag, your tribe fed? Is it for killing little rodents around? Is it a tactical weapon system where you're gonna be going out and employing it in tactical situations? So it varies. So I'm gonna throw out some bare bones minimum numbers for you guys, four different scenarios, four different weapon systems. I'm gonna to try to generalize it as much as possible, although, like I said, it depends. It depends on the weapon system, it depends on what you're doing, what your role is, a lot of factors. It depends on the situation, what's going on out there also. It also depends on whether you live way back in the woods or you live downtown in a city or in the suburbs. It depends. <laughs> That's When somebody answers a question about preparedness, what do you need? How much of this do you need? How much of that do you need? What your plan should be? And they give you an answer, a straight up answer. Throw the BS flag on that one because it depends. There are so many variables, so many factors that you gotta take into account. There is no just cut and dry answer. To give somebody a realistic answer for any situation, I would have to know them fairly well. I would have to look at their property, look at their situation, go through a lot of different things before I would be feel comfortable in giving them a clear cut answer. And even then, I would still build in some fudge factor. All right, so let's get to it. Bare bones. Let's start off with, say you have a shotgun. Shotguns are very plentiful, very widely available. Lots of people have them in the United States of America. A shotgun. Now, is that gonna be your primary weapon system for going out and fighting the bad guys? If it is, then you want more. But generally speaking, what I would do is I would have a, I would have a mix of the different loads for the shotgun. I would have bird shot, I would have buck shot. If you're capable of using slugs, maybe some slugs. A variety of shot sizes and weights. With that said, all in all, I would say about 500 rounds of shotgun shells. Maybe 200 in buckshot, maybe 300 in various birdshot loads. I don't know. Like I said, generally speaking, I would prefer that number to be more like a thousand for a shotgun. Now me, I don't really, I'm not a shotgun guy. I see the benefits of running a shotgun. I do have shotgun, but for me, I don't even remember how many shotgun rounds or shotgun shells I have, but I'd say 500 minimum, a thousand, better, depending on the length of the situation, etc. Let's get into the next thing. So say you have a hunting rifle, a bolt action or a lever action rifle, maybe a pump, 
rifle, old school. Maybe a single shot, whatever. Those kind of calibers and those kind of weapon systems aren't really gonna be employed in a tactical, like combative, frontline fighting situation. As a primary weapon system, like lots of rounds going down range, that's what I mean. They will be used as a support weapon, designated a marksman weapon, stuff like that, standing in LPOP, guard, sniper, overwatch, precision rifleman, those kind of things. So, with that said, I would also say about 500 rounds. Say, for example, I have a 308 bolt gun. That's my primary precision rifle. I would say 500 rounds minimum for that rifle. I would feel better off with a thousand rounds. See where I'm going with this? All right, so let's get to the one that a lot of people wanna talk about. So say you have an AR-15, an AK, whatever it is, semi-automatic rifle that you can use in a combative tactical situation, two-way range type stuff. CQB, out in the woods doing the stuff, wherever it may be, urban, rural, that doesn't really matter, but it does affect some things. So I would say for a tactical style weapon system, semi-automatic rifle, 1,000 rounds, minimum. Why do I say that? <clears throat> well, let's talk about a bunch of things. So, and we're not even talking about magazines. You know, you need plenty of magazines. I would say have enough magazines to have all those 1,000 rounds loaded into, ready to go. Side note, people talk about spring set and keeping your magazines loaded by wearing out your springs. Well, modern springs aren't really affected by that. And if you know anything about metal, what stresses metal more? By compressing it, having it sit there in one position or continually loading and unloading it, making the metal bend continuously. That's what wears out metal. So keeping your mags loaded. I keep all my mags loaded. I have mags loaded for 10 or 20 years and they're fine. I go out and shoot them all the time. All right. So dispel a rumor. Maybe if you have some old, old magazines, maybe you wouldn't want to do that. I don't know. So plenty of magazines, thousand rounds plus. I prefer for a combative weapon system like that. I prefer the number more like 5,000 rounds per weapon system. So if you have two ARs, I would recommend 10,000 rounds. Now that's a ludicrous number. Why would you say that? You know, if there's two way ranges opening up or in civil war, whatever it is, conflict happening, you're gonna die way before you need to expend those 5,000 rounds. Good point, probably right. That is probably true. But it's not just for me, it is for other people also, and it's for sustainment over a long period because we're not the US military. We don't get supply drops. We have to rely on what we have, what our tribe has, what our mag has, what we can scavenge and find in a big event. So the more rounds, the better. I mean, to me, that's always a better answer because if you don't need them, if you don't end up using them, so what? It's better to have more than you'll need than run out and have less than you'll need. So 1,000 rounds minimum. Now, if you, so let's talk a little bit about loadout. I've, I've done loadout videos and stuff like that. On your person, as a tactical person going out there and fighting the good fight, I'm gonna give two scenarios, two setups, just to simplify it. So I'm gonna talk urban, military operations, urban mount, military operations and urban terrain, urban fighting. And I'm gonna talk about out here in the woods, rural fighting, mountain fighting, woodland fighting, etc. Okay, let's start off with the urban. Urban, I would say, I would personally keep at least eight magazines full on my kit readily accessible. Now, I would prefer, actually, that number be more 10 or 12 readily accessible mags with one in the weapon system and the other 10 or 11, nine, whatever, 
on your kit readily accessible. And then another four to six, eight maybe in your pack. Because in an urban situation, you're probably gonna be expending a lot more rounds. Probably, like I say, everything depends because it is a more target rich environment. It is an environment where you will probably be expending a lot of rounds. And this is just my advice. I'm not the gospel, I don't know everything. I have a lot of experience in the military, yes, but tailor it to your needs. If you're sitting a fixed fighting position, LPOP, protecting the homestead, protecting the mag, your home, whatever it may be, maybe you only need to have like four to six mags because if you can't get them off of you by that point, then you either need to retreat, you need to get out or do something else. Have support elements come up, come around them, flank them, whatever, take them out, stuff like that. Or rural, let's get into rural. Now, I would still say eight readily accessible magazines. Personally. Now, you might go with six. I don't like running my kit so it's all sticking out here. I don't like those triple doubles where it holds six mags because you got that thick and then you got your plates. So you're talking, it's sticking way out here. So you're talking way out here. That does inhibit your ability to get prone. I know people ask me all the time, how do I get prone on my kit? I do. And when you put your rifle down and the mag is on the ground anyway, I'm lined up with my sights, with the way my system is. But I run one layer of magazines. That's why I run a war belt with a lot more mags on it. There's more mags in my war belt than there are in my plate carrier. I run three across the front, one under, one under each arm. The ones under each arm are more difficult to get to, especially this one, because it's gonna be very difficult to get to. This one is fairly easy. This is like my last ditch mag, my very, very last go-to mag. So, the more important thing though, that I would like to discuss really quickly than how much ammo do you need? Actually, there's one more thing I wanna mention first before I get into that other part. I feel it's more important for you guys to be putting your money into more magazines, more ammo right now, than more guns. If you have what you need already, if you already have some firearms that are capable of meeting your needs and fulfilling the roles that you might be in, you don't need more. There's plenty out there, plenty of people have them. Now, maybe having a couple spares to hand to people may be a good idea, sure, but I would much prefer if you are lacking in the ammunition area, don't buy more guns. Put that money into ammunition. Put that money into what I'm really getting into though. Put that money into training. Training ammunition so that you can be more effective. That's what's important. You need to be fit mentally and physically. You need to have good kit. You need to have adequate performing, functioning, reliable weapon systems enough ammo, and all the skills and abilities that you're gonna need to go out and do this stuff. It's not just like Call of Duty. You can't just jump out there and run out there and think that you're gonna be G.I. Joe or Rambo or something like that when you've been sitting on your couch for you know years just playing video games in your mom's basement. Honestly, you gotta be fit. You gotta be getting out there and doing the things. You gotta be training, 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 training. It is the most important thing that you can possibly be doing right now training. If you're not a tactical guy, I'm not saying don't train. You need to be learning and honing your skills, whatever they are. Gardening, canning, sewing, knitting, hunting, whatever your skills are, get better at them and grow more skills. Build more skills. Become more skillful and have more abilities. That makes you more valuable in your mutual assistance group and in the community as a whole. And the more people that have more skills, the better off we'll be. I love you guys, have a wonderful day, and blessings to you and yours.